All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Adinka Adam Bele, who is in New York City. How are you doing? I am wonderful, John. Thank you. Thank you for having me here today. And I can call you Yinka for short? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Everyone calls me Yinka, so that's fine. Excellent, excellent. All right, perfect. And uh, Yinka is a thought leader on excellence principles. She's an excellent strategist, coach, teacher, and author of the book, Master Excellence, 13 Principles to Help You Win at Life. Uh, and that was just published in um, April, April of this year. April of this year. Right, let, yeah. me, let me just quickly throw up the book here so everybody can see it. Just for one second here again, it's called Master Excellence, 13 Principles to Help You Win at Life. Uh, and this is what we're going to talk about today. So um, first of all, uh, first of all, Yinka, give me the kind of genesis or the background of this book and where did it come from? Well, so the book, um, it came from, from my experience, basically. So in 2009, at the height of the Great Recession, I found myself uh, without, a, without a job. Um, I, without a job, I was heavily pregnant. And my husband and I just purchased our first home. Mm. And it was in that very dark little place that I made a decision to just do better with my life. I didn't have any answers. I didn't know how to go about it, but I just said, okay, you know, I have to do better. And that was because um, prior to that time, um, my I wasn't financially disciplined. So I was working in the in, um, financial services industry as an investment banker, uh, making good money, but I just wasn't financially disciplined. So one of the areas that I focused on individually was finance. And I did everything everything in my power to learn how to be financially disciplined and to become, um, to grow in excellence in my finance. And of course, you know, as you, as you grow in excellence in one area, it permeates other areas of your life. And it was really that journey, that story mm -hmm. that um, led to me writing this book. I mean, since then, I've helped many clients, I've helped um, many clients, friends, small businesses to better understand what um, excellence is, and I've shown them how to apply it to their situations and how to live out a life of excellence on a daily basis. Yeah, and which is fantastic. And one thing you mentioned there that I just want to come back to because I think it's really, really important is that at the beginning you didn't have the answer, right? But you had faith that there was an answer, and somehow, somehow you're gonna, some way you're gonna figure out your way through. And I think that is so incredibly important whenever you want to make changes or life or, or situations in your life maybe are not going the way you want them to. Is sometimes everything starts with just that piece, bit of faith that things will get better if you start to do the right things, think there is an answer. Yes, absolutely. I think because a lot of times you don't always have the answer. Mm -hmm. But again, it's just, you know, taking um, the next best step. So, you know, I have the faith, I have the desire to just do better because I didn't want to find myself in that position ever again. And I said, OK, you know, so where do I even start? And it's, it was, you know, from reading books, reading books on how to be how to become financially disciplined. And, uh, you know, that led to taking courses and just just doing everything and you know it was just taking the first step as i took the first step um then i took the step after that and until you know i found my place in the position of where okay you know what i can now comfortably comfortably say that i have mastered my finance yeah that's fantastic and um, one of the one of the parts in in your book, you talk about you know how to take charge of your day so that life doesn't literally pass you by, and I feel like you know that there's a lot of that going on because we're so distracted at the moment. Like people say, "Oh, we're we're busier than we've ever been," and I'm like, "No, we're not. We're more distracted than we've ever been." There's a big difference. And we have things like this that are harassing us all day long. So how do you how do you how do you take charge of your day and stop like everything just passing you by? You getting distracted? You just you know, life just suddenly, you know, it's the end of the week and you haven't really accomplished anything. It's really just having a solid, sitting down, taking the time to establish a solid daily routine. And 
excellence in a nutshell is living life with intentionality mm -hmm. and on purpose. So once you um, identify what that means to you, living your life with intentionality, you can, you'll know that you know our time here is very short and mm -hmm. it's our responsibility to make that short time count. So taking the time, setting the time to actually carve out a routine will help ensure that life is not just passing you by. Life, life is not just passing you by, that you're living your life purposefully. You have your set goals, your ambitions in front of you, and you're, you live your life, you make your daily decisions in, in a way that help, moves you closer to those daily goals. And each day, you know, at the end of each day, you know that um, whatever, it, whatever your goal is for that day, you can, you can certainly say that, you know something, I had a pro productive day, as opposed to just waking up and then just drifting through or just, you know, living life on cruise control. Life will pass you by. You wake up one day, 80, 85 years old and wonder like, what have I done with my life? And you just realize that in all the business and life just passed you by. Yeah, you know, it's a it's a it's a really it's a really good point. And it's a really good point about taking charge and the intentionality piece, because I think that's that's the key is to be intentional, you know, although otherwise you're kind of outsourcing your life to fate, really. And, you know, I don't trust fate that much, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so the other thing you mentioned here is about developing good character traits. What, what kind of character traits are you talking about? I think, um, I think you know, ha having character, it's it's essential to um, being a person of excellence. Um, I'll give you a couple of examples. So for me, I want to be known as I live my life. I intentionally live my life because I want to be known as a person of integrity. A person of excellence, a kind person, and a generous person. But again, that's not just going to happen. Okay, I have to ensure that I am daily in my decision making and um, in my action, the actions that I take. That I'm ensure I'm cultivating these traits into my life, basically, because you know, at the very bottom of it, if you don't even know where to start, your character can be seen in the way you treat other people mm. physically what are the things that you do when no one else is looking do you just do things to you know are you a different person when you know that um the limelight is on you and then when no one is looking are you mm. uh, you know the opposite of that so really just you know deciding on what you want your core values um to be i mean like whatever it is that you try to be just ensure it's a good one yeah. your core value <laughs> ensure it's a good one your car and then live your live out your life um via those core values yeah and I, and I think also as you get older and wiser as you get more experience you realize that you know having a small amount of core values is really critical ones that are you know the ones that are real anchors in your life rather than having lots of different ones you know having core ones that are kind of non-negotiable yeah absolutely absolutely because you don't you don't want too many actually you don't want too many but you just okay you know we are understand your strengths understand how you're wired know you for who you are and then decide that okay you know what if it's three if it's two it's if it's even four mm. it's up to you like okay but this has the four if you know after it's all said and done when people talk about me or when um when they remember me at least they can say that oh you know she lived she was a person of excellence mm -hmm. and along with that um we can say she was a person of integrity her word was her bond her word carried water and they can say you know she was kind she was a kind person it was because of who you were she was kind to you and she was a generous person as well you know again i'm using myself as an example mm -hmm. and that might differ that might differ for you you don't have to have those exact core values. You don't have to, you know, focus on those character traits, but you um, hone in on whatever it is that you want to be known for, but just ensure that you're a person of character. People can say, yes, he or she is a person of character. And and the thing is, at the end of the day, is you can't really be your authentic self until you know who your authentic self is and what your authentic self stands for. So, I mean, I see a lot of people now are going like, oh, be yourself, be authentic. And you go, yeah, that's you should be. But you should also recognize what does that mean? Like, who am I? You know, what? who am I really? Am I is this truly the authentic me or is this kind of a persona? Yeah. And it's, you know, if your authentic self is a cruel, unkind, <laughs> bully, you know, then, um, okay. So maybe we need to work on that. Yeah, yeah. Um, the good thing is, um, 
positive character traits can be learned. But you can't say, oh, you know, this is who I am. I am being my authentic self. And, you know, your actions, the way you live your life, it's, you know, it's causing more hurt and offense to others than anything else. But mm -hmm. again, it's just really sitting down and just self-reflecting and just decide, like, you know, I want to be a good person. Okay, how can I be that? And then yeah. asking, like the example that I gave in the book, you know, ask those that are closest to you, you know, how do you see me? How do you perceive me? People that you trust. And they will tell you, they'll tell you. And um, and then you take it from there. You work on it from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I always love it. You know, when people do things like, um, I, I'm, a, I'm, punctuality is something with me. I don't know. I'm very unusual for an Irish person because Irish people are very punctuality challenged normally. But I'm always been a punctual person. I can't stand people being late and I can't stand being late myself. And you ever have that person who always goes, ah, yeah, yeah, sorry I'm late, but you know me, blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm always late. And you just go, well, hang on a second. Like, who made you into someone special that I have to, you know, I have to uh, adapt to you being late because you don't have the respect to turn up on time? Right. Okay. So of course, you know, we all, we all have different areas of our life that we're still working on. And, you know, for, for some, for many people, actually, um, time management has, you know, it's one of those areas. And this is what I say. Okay. If you know, you are going to be late, um, let them know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let them know ahead of time. It's not something that you do all the time. You know, if it's a one-off, but you let them know, okay, mm -hmm. ahead of time. So that way, you know, they're not wasting their time or they're just sitting there looking for, you know, waiting for you mm -hmm. and wondering where you are. And if you do show up <laughs> late, you know, be apologetic, but try not to repeat yeah. it again next time. <laughs> exactly. That's the key. If you keep doing it, uh, you know, then uh, you might you might discover you don't get invited anymore. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Especially by me. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask you about here is the difference between gratitude and appreciation. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, that's a good one. OK, so, you know, me saying to you, like after this podcast, I would say, me just say, oh, you know, um, John, thank you. Thank you for having me on your podcast. That is me showing my gratitude to you. Mm -hmm. Appreciation is taking it to the next level. You know, if I decide to maybe send you a little gift, that is showing my appreciation. Um, another example, you go to a restaurant, um, the service was outstanding. You know, saying a thank you to the waiter or the waitress, that is showing your gratitude, mm -hmm. but taking to that next level and, um, you know, speaking to the manager and putting a good word um, for about that waitress or, you know, that is showing your mm -hmm. appreciation. It's just appreciation is just taking that next step after showing your gratitude. Yeah, I love that example, by the way, because more people should do that. It's like, you know, oftentimes, you know, saying to somebody, oh, you did a really good job. But and, and that's nice for them to hear, obviously. But when you go and you say, tell their manager or somebody of, you know, who's important to them and you say, oh, you know, Yink is done, doing such a fantastic job. And then they come back and say, oh, I just received some great feedback about you. That That is a thousand times more satisfying than it is. You know, it's nice to get praise directly, but the indirect stuff is even more satisfying. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I just think, you know, I'm a big believer in showing appreciation. And of course, it's not... You don't show appreciate. I mean, there are times when you know just yeah. showing gratitude is okay, but if you're able to show your appreciation, just do it. Um, show your appreciation. Yeah, and this one I want to talk about because I love this one is uh, that you cannot operate and grow in excellence without understanding what tact is. Uh. <laughs> and I feel like I feel like tact. Hmm, I feel like that's a commodity that's probably in sh that's in short supply. I feel. Yes, it's it's fast becoming a a lost art. Yeah. And it's really, you know, in a nutshell, it's just in it's it's showing consideration for others in in the actions that you take and in, you know, and how you talk as well, basically. And um, in the example I give in the book, I give an example about the first time I traveled to Egypt. So the first time I right before I traveled to Egypt, you know, I did some research. It's an Arabic country and you know, mm -hmm. they, it's one of the liberal ones, but they do expect that um, the women to have their shoulders and their knees covered. They're right. not asking you to, you know, put on a, a boob or whatever, mm -hmm. but, you know, out of respect for their culture, they expect um, the women to be covered like so. And, you know, it's, it, it, I went in the summer, it was really hot, but, you know, the fact that I still, I still took the time, I did the research and it gave me time to plan. So I took clothing that were, that honored the culture, but still kept me relatively cool, you know? So it's, that's just an example of 
tact. Mm -hmm. um, another example that I give in the book is, okay, you go shopping, you go shopping at a supermarket. You took the time to get the cart out. You went shopping, you loaded um, your vehicle with the item from the cart. Why just leave it in the parking lot? Please mm -hmm. take the extra two minutes or one minute to put it back where it belongs. I mean, just having that mindset of, oh, well, it's not my job. They have, they're paying yeah. someone for this. No. How you do one thing speaks volumes about you. How we do one thing is how we do most things. Mm -hmm. So those are just examples of tax and just in the little things that we do. Yeah, no, and I and I think that's so important because, as you say, I mean, I think it's becoming a dying art now. I think people, are, unfortunately, you know, people are getting more caught up in themselves and self obsessed that they forget about things. I love the cart one; is a great one. I mean, how often do you see, you know, people who you think should know better just leaving their cart in the parking space, you know, so that somebody else can go, "Oh, great parking space!" Oh no, there's a cart in it. Yeah, right. I mean, do you know, yeah, the number of times I've I've actually you know, almost driven into a yeah. cart. Because I didn't see it on time, it was in a you know in a parking spot. So yeah. it's just it's the little things. It is, the, little it, things. Is the, it is the it is the little things because you know it's it's the little things that make up the big things because everything is is uh, is just a, co a culmination of other things. So as you said, if you're if you're doing those kind of things, then you're doing them in other areas of your life and probably way more egregiously than you know the 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 shopping cart. Um, so um, so. Uh, you you say like how you live out your life, your daily life is how you teach others. And I think this is a really important concept. I just wanted to talk about um, modeling behavior, right? Because, you know, we're in a, we're now, you know, we're coming up to uh, uh, an election season and all of that. And, you know, people are online and they're screaming at each other and all this kind of garbage. And, I, and I'm always trying to say to people is you never change somebody's mind or influence somebody by shouting at them and telling them they're stupid and they're wrong. How you do influence them is is when they look at you and they go, "Oh, Yinka seems to have her stuff together. She's an interesting person. She maybe I need to understand a little bit more about what how she thinks and how she operates and and that as opposed to me trying to tell you, you know. So I mean, to think that whole idea of how you live and your role modeling. Yes, absolutely. You know, um, I like that saying that goes, you know, by the by the by their fruit you'll know them. I can sit here and spend all the time that, you know, I'm a nice person, I'm this, and, you know, just um, talk, just um, praise myself from now till mm -hmm. kingdom come. However, you know, it's you spending time with me or just you saying how I live my life. Okay, yes, um, this is what I'm saying, but the way I live my life, my actions, do they line up? Do they align with all this, all, the, all these great things that mm -hmm. I've said about myself? I think you know modeling. It's it's very important because particularly if you're living your life with intentionality, mm -hmm. we talked about character. So if I say that okay, I'm a person of integrity. So do my coworkers or do those around me? Can they trust me if I say I'm going to do something? Can do they know? Do they know that mm -hmm. you know I do what I'm, I say I'm going to do, even when it's not convenient? Because not mm -hmm. just it's one thing to do those things when it's convenient, even when it's not convenient. So when you live your life with intentionality, like okay, you know. This is the kind of person that I want to be known by. So, for example, a person of excellence. So how are you at your workplace? Do you go the extra mile or do you just have mm -hmm. the mindset of, well, they're not even pay me enough anyway. I'm just going to do the minimal amount of work and I'm out of here. No, a person of excellence understands that it's a lot more than that. They go the extra mile. So you living your life on purpose um, with intention will allow you to live out those core values um, that you claim to possess. And people will see that as well. People will still see the good. I don't have to talk you know, from morning to night. Let your fruit speak for you. Yeah. And I think that's a really important point for people to, to take away is at the end of the day is, you know, it's a lot of talk. There's a lot of posting. There's a lot of writing online. There's a lot of all of this. Um, and maybe if you just did a little less of that and more of the doing and more of the living it out, yeah, you'd be surprised. You might be surprised at the impact. And I think the other thing too, Yinky, you'll probably agree is when you start doing that, you will impact those around you in your community. And if everybody did that in the small community or that's surrounding them, it spreads out. So you don't Absolutely. need to be talking about, you know, huge global issues and fiction. This is like influence the world the world around you and that's the best that you can do absolutely and then at the very beginning of the book it talks about how you don't need to have a huge platform to live out a life of excellence you know you 
start to live out excellence and start to impact your sphere of in influence, irrespective of how small that is, you start to do your part. As you start to do your part, it will have a ripple effect. And just like you mm -hmm. rightly said, imagine all of us just, you know, doing our little parts mm -hmm. and, you know, that um, combined together, that's a huge impact. You don't have to be, yeah. you know, a superstar, an influencer or whatnot. You just start from where you are right now and then watch, um, I just watch the ripple effects of that. Even mm. if it's just your family members, you know, that see you and they start to emulate you. And then yeah. it, that's how it spreads. Yeah. That's how we spread. That's how we make the change. That's how we impact the world for the better. Yeah, absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Well, listen, Yinka, this has been fantastic. And all of Yinka's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Oh, yes. My name is Yinka Adebenle. I'm an excellence coach and strategist, and I help my audience learn about the principles, systems, and habits of excellence to help them to win at life. Yeah. Well, I would encourage you to go check out the book and check out uh, Yinka's work. Thank you again, Yinka. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see you all again very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, John. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me on your podcast. <laughs>